Welcome to the Keel Hauled Podcast. I'm your host, Captain Logan, and we've got a lot of Sea of Thieves news to cover today. So tie yourselves to the mast and hold fast. Ahoy there, pirates. I hope you had yourselves a good weekend, a good weekend. I know I did. This week, we're going to be talking more about Adventure 4, how I feel about it, some of the lore that's actually going on with it so that you can kind of understand if you didn't go around and read all the journals. I know a lot of people tend to click through them or you may not have heard about them before. So we're going to dive into that as well as some of the stuff that's going on with the community as far as the social media accounts go, some of the things that you might have missed if you were paying attention to those, and a lot more in this week's episode of the Keel Hauled Podcast. But before we get into any of that, I have to thank the patrons. They're the ones that went over to patreon.com forward slash keelhauled podcast to make sure that this content stays free for you. They're the ones supporting me and they're the ones that are offered the opportunity to come onto the podcast, much like last week's episode, to talk about their thoughts and their feelings about Sea of Thieves. It's great to get their thoughts and opinions on the game, to see where they're coming from, to see how it varies from yours as well as mine, what they're interested in and what they'd like to see as they kind of get further and further into this story that we're going through right now so i wanted to shout them out with people's republic l cute balls slum captain hasco chateau Neuf, zombie killer cloud cosmic johnson davram tv el jefe esteban fergatron trickster jabaro 5 kazia the rogue lumpy srq ocarian darth w goose Evil Morpheus, Xbox Mike 29, Murphy Le- Lives, Munchy, or excuse me, Mutinous Max, who unfortunately missed out on last week's episode, but had some really good stories to share. So hopefully that becomes available at the end of June when they come uh, or when we get the next episode. Uh, then we have Regis Stella, Russ Bell Kid, Norwegian, Skinny Matt, Scum Melt 666, Strange Stan, Tarnished Film, That Kilted Guy, TN Professor, Real Big Tuna, Uriel Keynes, Big Bad Pad, Mina Fairy, Super Pack, Music Me, The Lore Chronologist, Dead Eye Dre, Ghost Boy 20, Neon, Evil Martha, Peter Miller, Ruski Doo, Skinny Hat, or excuse me, Straw Hat Connor, uh, Thor Von Blitz, Windsor Chris, and Zam. Wow. Thank you all so much for your support. It means the world to me. Uh, I, I could not do this podcast as well. If I if I didn't have your support, I wouldn't be able to do as much as I'm, I'm being able to do with Sea of Thieves Fest coming up this July. At the end of July, we're going to have a very special episode with Davram and myself. We're going to be in London visiting fans as well as other Sea of Thieves content creators. There's going to be a whole Whole bunch of stuff going on that Saturday. I'm super, super excited for it. And a lot of how I'm able to get over there is actually because of the patrons. They have supported me and they're giving me this opportunity to meet with some of them as well as other people and just have a good time with Sea of Thieves. So I'm very excited about that. Uh, Cora the Explorer, my cat, has jumped up on the desk. She wants me to give her some attention. So, and I want to get you guys into this podcast. So let's get into that. First up on today's docket, let's talk about the things you might have missed if you weren't paying attention to the social media accounts for Sea of Thieves this week. There were a few things that were going on, and unfortunately, by the time you're hearing this, they will have been over. Uh, Unfortunately, because of the way that the podcast comes out, I always seem to miss this stuff. Every once in a while, I'll hear about Twitch drops early on so I can give you a heads up about it. And unfortunately, this was one of those situations where I actually might have missed this if I hadn't been sailing this weekend. So if you were sailing this weekend, you should be fine. Don't worry about it. Uh, If you wanted to get the Merciless Scars, the Merciless Marauder Scars, as long as you logged in, before June 6th, 9 a.m. UTC, uh, you should be okay. You should be fine. Um, The trouble runs into is with these scars, these are the scars that were shown in one of the past videos for season six. Uh, These were something that we were expecting to actually get, I believe, for season six. It might actually, I take that back. I think it might have been season five. No, I think it was season six. I'm second guessing myself and I'm not going to waste the time to go check it out. If you know, you know. Uh, But anyway, this was um, scars that were shown off in one of the videos that they showed off to kind of showcase upcoming content for, I believe, season six. 
if it was season five, I'm sure you guys will probably tell me too. But uh, and we never got these. We never actually saw these. We got a different set of uh, scars that were added to the season pass, and these were left in question. So. If you logged in this weekend, you should have been fine. Um, if, if actually, if you'd been logged in any time between June 2nd and June 6th, you would have been fine. Uh, this was actually something that they gave away as a result of the Steam client where Sea of Thieves was uh, pushed over to Steam. They were testing that for a while and then released it on the 2nd. Uh, and this is the two year anniversary of that. I don't remember us getting something for the year one uh, anniversary, which, um, you know, it, it doesn't really need to be something, but uh, hopefully if you were keeping track of social media and you knew about this, um, then you found out that Steam uh, was giving a sale for 50% off Sea of Thieves and uh, they, they as long as you logged in, doesn't matter what client you were on, uh, whether it were console or, or what generation, what hardware, doesn't matter. As long as you logged into your account sometime between the 2nd and the 6th, you were able to pick up these Merciless Marauder Scars. If you did and you don't have them, make sure that you wait at least 72 hours before uh, submitting a ticket through the Sea of Thieves uh, website and making sure that you're actually getting that cosmetic. Um, there's definitely a bit of an interesting thing that I have like a conspiracy theory here. So I've got my tinfoil hat on and I want to kind of throw out the idea that it feels like these scars were intended to be in the season pass. Uh, for whatever reason, they came out with the Dark Relic ones. Maybe they put in the Merciless Marauder scars uh, as something that was intended for a future update or a future release or a future event. And uh, because they put them in the video and they never released them, people always asked what was going on with those scars. Uh, we got the scars from the Dark Relics in the season pass, which is what makes me think it was actually season six. And because of that, uh, these were always kind of left like in, in a questionable state, like when are we actually going to get these? They never named them in the video, so we don't know if uh, the ones that were in the video were called the Dark Relics and they changed it to Mar Merciless Marauder scars, but something kind of tells me that these were intended to be out for something and they either were put in the video incorrectly or uh, these were the originally intended ones and they had to change it for whatever reason. Um, so hopefully you guys got these. These are probably the best looking scars that I've seen compared to the other scars that we've got outside of the ones that I've been using, which was the cursed sales uh, scars where you have kind of like the three long scars across your chest. Uh, I still really love that one. That's that's still the one that I, that I hold very dear to me um, just because of the way they look. But we also got some other stuff that came as a result of social media. Uh, one of the tweets that went out on the second as well was lay claim to the legacy of Golden Sands sales. Whether you strive to hashtag save Golden Sands or scheme to hashtag ruin Golden Sands, sign up for the social swag by linking your accounts below, then tweeting using either those hashtags by 9 a.m. UTC on June 9th to qualify. Now, if you don't know, and I wouldn't blame you, uh, Sea of Thieves has a seethieves.com forward slash social dash swag website. What you do there is you go and you actually link up your Twitter account, your Discord account, and you get a special bonus. Normally, if you uh, link these accounts to the Sea of Thieves account or the Sea of Thieves website, you will get the Golden Sailor uh, watch, yeah, pocket watch, the Golden Sailor speaking trumpet. And as a bonus reward, because they removed, I believe, I think it was Instagram originally, uh, they added the bonus of the Golden Sailor Blunderbuss. Uh, originally, when these cosmetics came out, when these uh, uh, things kind of started up, the permissions required to link these accounts were pretty egregious uh, for what they were giving you. And they've since changed it and they've since uh, made it far, far easier for you to feel more comfortable linking these accounts. Uh, I personally have gone back and actually linked these up. Uh, and that way, when I went out and tweeted, you know, hashtag ruin golden sands, uh, I immediately received the legacy of the golden sale or golden sands sales. 
Now, if you aren't familiar with what these look like, um, these are a half orange, half white design uh, with a, a ship oriented in the in the middle of them. And they're very, they're very, uh, I would say plain, very natural looking, um, aside from the very sharp edge that is the the half uh, diagonal design. Um, these look very familiar to what you've seen kind of in the early days of Sea of Thieves, something that I've been talking a bit about, about how I kind of liked more of the toned down aspect of certain cosmetics. I really do like those. I still think that the the Barbosa and uh, crew of Jack Sparrow uh, and the Black Pearls costumes were some of the best that have been added because they represent very similar uh, aesthetics to what the original pirates kind of wore back in the day. So seeing these kind of sails, uh, it's nice because they're not glowy. They're not like super tattered. They're very kind of um, um, acceptable for what you would normally see out in the world. And I, I really appreciate that. Uh, so these were easy to pick up. All you had to do is do a tweet. Um, I know that people who wanted to get these who were uh, feeling kind of FOMO or, or figured it was not as uh, a hard of a task to do as other things in the game went ahead and created a Twitter account and uh, signed up, got it all connected, and then put out one tweet just for the sake of actually getting these sales. Uh, the design here is that Rare is trying to uh, breed more connect or breed more or bridge more between uh, the community that plays and the community that uh, engages with the social media. They're trying to drum up uh, social uh, interaction between the community because it's going to play a part with a, you know, a, a different tasks that are given to us through adventures. And because of that, they want people to be aware of when things are going out. Now, I don't know if that's because they're seeing a dip in the actual engagement, or maybe they just want to strive to actually get higher engagement for a lot of the stuff that they're doing. If they're going to be building sales uh, for social media stuff and nobody engages with the social media stuff because not many people are wanting to be on social media, especially given the you know nowadays how how much of a pain it is, uh, or the just the general uh, uh, kind of temperament of social media for the most part you know gamers on twitter are very very fussy babies for the most part and uh yeah it's i don't blame people for not wanting to engage with that uh, especially when they're busy with their lives already. So seeing them kind of push this forward, seeing them, especially with the mysteries and stuff, pushing social media, I'm not too surprised that they are adding uh, cosmetics and rewards through engagement on social media. Um, it's not something that I I care really either way about. Uh, I care more when it's actually about like a mystery, when they're when they're trying to build an ARG out and they start to gate stuff with that ARG, uh, that's when I start to have more of an issue about them kind of uh, pushing social media as the means of engagement. One of the other things that I, I guess if I did have to kind of uh, po poke at something and say like, hey, this is the thing that kind of bugs me is uh, they seem to have kind of a weekly cadence, much like the podcast. Uh, they want to have stuff that uh, engages people on a weekly basis. Every Sunday, there's a, a Sunday vibes uh, tweet that goes out. Every Tuesday, there's a trivia tweet that goes out. Every Monday, there's a Welcome Pirates uh, tweet that goes out. And they generally have kind of a schedule that you can rely on for a lot of stuff. Um, and, and they have the uh, photo or no, the yeah, the the golden hour sales uh, campaigns and stuff that they do on a regular basis as well, too. So. I, I definitely see why they're doing what they're doing. They want more engagement. They want the game to be more popular. They're putting a lot of effort. There's a lot of money that's getting put into the game to do these cinematics, to do these adventures. Uh, they're trying to drive more attention to the actual game. Even so much that even uh, IGN put out an article this week, which I was actually, uh, I don't know if this was something where Microsoft or Rare had reached out to uh, IGN to see about writing up something for that. Typically, they do have um, people that they that they engage with uh, in the different kind of um, uh, media outlets, whether it be IGN or Windows Central or, or, or uh, smaller sites, things like that. 
that or xbox era for example where they want people to kind of uh touch on some of the things that are going on with the game i don't know if that was necessarily the case here uh but ryan dinsdale over ign put out an article saying see if these players are at war over whether to save or destroy in an iconic island or location uh and this is this is one of those things where they are actually kind of uh pulling up different um different people's social media accounts and being like, hey, they're pointing to this and saying like, hey, people are creating like, uh, do your part um, from like Fish Hook Cook uh, to to save Golden Sands. Uh, they, they've, they've been kind of recognizing that there is a social media fervor going on with um, this adventure, which I think is exactly kind of what uh, the, the um, what Rare would hope for. Uh, the last time they had something like this was actually with uh, a pirate's life. And while I don't think that we're going to be getting another pirate's life in this year, uh, I do think that we are going to see something coming up in the future that may actually play a role in the upcoming Xbox Bethesda showcase on the 12th. Um, I think we're going to see some, some trailers there. Uh, it seems like they've hired on a studio to work on trailers. So I would not be surprised if them putting together a content uh, trailer to kind of showcase some of the content that is going to be coming for the rest of this year uh, would, would be something that shows up at that showcase. We're less than a week out from, or we're about a week out from that actual trailer or that actually show. Uh, so I'm looking forward to seeing like if we actually get some Sea of Thieves content at the Xbox Bethesda showcase and if that actually pertains to uh, Flameheart. I would not be surprised if we got a trailer that really kind of showcases like the opening of the Reapers hideout and showcasing the Reapers uh, legends version of the pirate legend and giving players an opportunity to become Reaper legends uh, out, out on the seas and kind of uh, renege or, or give up their pirate legend status. Um, and, and while they're at it, I'm sure because of all the the, the weird bugs that we've seen uh, involving ship names and stuff and the weird structures that are getting built out on the actual outposts, I would not be surprised if a captaincy update, something that was a promised um, or not promised, but talked about heavily in the first year was something that they uh, are finally getting closer to realizing and seeing like what that actually will look like in Sea of Thieves uh, and then having a really kind of cool video to showcase like, hey, this is something we talked about a long time ago. And I know a lot of players have been uh, looking forward to really kind of living up that fantasy of having your ship and your crew and having titles uh, like captain and, and first mate and cannoneer and helmsman and stuff uh, or lookout, uh, crow nest or cabin boy what have you and uh in an in a effort to expand the role-playing uh, uh tools that we have in game uh we're bringing captaincy to sea of thieves and with that you can now become a captain and decide to sail under the the flag of the reaper bone or reaper's bones and under captain flameheart uh or if you will join the rest of the the pirate lords and pirate legends and uh sail under the the athena uh emissary and be become a, a true Athena's uh, captain or something like that. You know, I would not be surprised if, if that is kind of what we're going to be getting in the coming week as we kind of wait and see what's going to happen with this Xbox Bethesda showcase. But knowing that right now, um, a game that came out March 20th, 2018 is still getting play, uh, is still getting articles written about it in some of the biggest um, outlets for games media is really, really awesome. I don't necessarily think that these articles are getting near as much attention as I would say, uh, like anything Elden Ring or anything God of War is right now. But knowing that those articles are still being written, that recognition is still being uh, uh, paid to Rare helps with kind of that discussion, helping with uh, the community to stay strong for us to kind of have uh, Rare still have relevance with this game. And if they're relevant, if they're doing well, if social media helps with engagement and sells copies of the game and people are putting money into the Emporium, they can continue to justify the actual development for the game. 
Microsoft is expecting a return on investment. They invested heavily at the beginning of the, the, the game's lifespan to ensure that the game could get to a state where it would be sustainable, given how far out a lot of the big titles and consoles for, CFE, or for Microsoft were. They were waiting on Forza Horizon 5. They were hoping that the Bethesda deal would go through. They knew Halo Infinite was on the horizon, and they had a whole lot of big plans, and they needed to make sure that there were some games that really stuck it out and were really good games and made sure that it kept people engaged in the xbox ecosystem and i believe sea of thieves to be one of those games it has become one of those pillar games so i don't know where i was going with that and i kind of rambled so um it's nice to see that the save golden sands or ruin golden sands is getting a lot more attention um i don't feel like the game and the adventure actually represent the importance i would say of our actions as well as they could have when we actually get into the adventure i feel like the adventure itself is uh something to do along the way like you do it a couple times you do it a few times depends on how how close you are how much you feel like your investment but uh it does feel like every time i go to the the sea of thieves uh website and i go to actually check uh my overview where i, I typically look at like the adventures and stuff that's going on um i notice that for all intents and purposes it's a stalemate and has been for for a while so I'm not really sure like at what point is is like when do I actually get to feel like what I'm doing is impacting what's happening uh, because it it's a situation where I really do feel that because we didn't have a choice because we didn't have a situation where uh, you only got to pick one side and you had to pick that side um, that people are doing both sides of it and then being done with it. And only a small percentage of, of the player base are continuing to do uh, like the, the crates or the, the rowboats and stuff. Because honestly, the easiest thing to do is go buy a fruit crate and a wood crate, sail over to Golden Sands and turn them in. Or sail over to Wanderer's Refuge or uh, Cannon Cove, find a rowboat, row it over to Golden Sands and blow it up. And that is literally the easiest thing you can do to contribute to either side. Um, with that being said... I'm glad to see that I've seen social media kind of showcase people grabbing a whole bunch of relic cases or a whole bunch of supplies and stuffing them in the different areas and kind of showcasing it. That's been really fun. Um, I, I, I do feel like <laughs> there should have been um, something a little closer tied to the actual island uh, in the sense that with the hunters uh, and with Merrick, you actually had to deliver uh, merchant crates, which was a, a, an idea I really I really don't know how, how they felt like that was where they wanted to go with that, but the choice is made and there's no point in dwelling on it. Um, but with the Reapers, one of the things that I think would have been great was, uh, in, in if, if I had my design hat on, this is what I would do. I would have there be a battle between Reapers, who are a horde mode AI based system, on Golden Sands Outpost. So anyone that wanted to save Golden Sands could sit there and help protect the merchants over at uh, Golden Sands as they continue to rebuild. Uh, you bring supplies, you defend against AI threats, uh, and that kind of like has a, a wave based system, kind of like how the Voil, uh, Veil Voyage has right now. And then for the Reapers, the Reapers have an opportunity. They stack up a bunch of caches on their rowboat. They row the rowboat over to the island. And then they have to bury the, the caches on the actual island uh, because the, some of the dialogue that's actually been talked about in this adventure is how they've been burying relic cases and how the kegs are empowering the relic cases. So if you blow up a keg, the, the power inside that keg on the back of the rowboat is affecting the relics in the caches that are buried on Golden Sands. Uh, but it, it doesn't make sense if Merrick and them are b digging those up and removing them. You know, who's burying more at this point? Are the Reapers, the AI Reapers doing it? That doesn't feel like Sea of Thieves. That feels like, uh, that feels like something that should be done by pirates. We are the ones that have just recently in season five figured out how to bury stuff and as a result this would have been a great opportunity 
to work in conjunction with the commendations to bury stuff to add future commendations uh, to that that build rat adventure to actually build out you know bury as many relic cases as you want or dig them up and turn them in uh, and then utilize the actual adventure board say like hey I've went and uh, uh, buried a bunch of stuff uh, or buried a bunch of relic caches over on Golden Sands Outpost and when you you bury them you get your map bundle and then you go and you hand them map bundle over to the reaper uh, or the servant of flame and he gives you uh, credit for all of those or you can be nice if you want to save golden sands and you steal a bunch or you buy a bunch or you find a bunch and then those stolen ones you bury and then you give them to uh you you put the map up on the the map board and then whoever comes in goes and digs those up but if they don't get digging up then you get a credit for uh people actually like for you actually doing that and it helps save golden sense so many ways that you could have done this that i feel like i wish i had been there to uh share these 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 ideas and, and what what could have been interesting and maybe that's a failing on me for not being on insiders all the time um because i, I don't want to get spoiled with the content uh and if i want the content to get better then maybe i need to engage with it at an earlier stage uh to kind of share my feelings on how this feels as a whole uh but it never it's hard to tell when you're only being you're only being given like parts of what's going on um in insiders as i've been told uh, privately that that not everything always comes to see these uh, insiders and sometimes some of the stuff that comes to insiders doesn't ever actually make it to the game so I'm always kind of left wondering like if this is all we're if we're not going to get all of it at what point can we really uh, share our feelings on um, what everything like what what what's the feedback how good a feedback can you get if you're only getting a part of the actual uh, event kind of thing if that makes sense um, I feel like I'm losing my train of thought here as well, too. So uh, as we kind of move away from the fact that Sea Thieves is getting the the adventure kind of noticed by other people, uh, we did find out, thankfully, that there is actually going to be an event. Uh, they are actually going to have a reveal for who's actually winning the Sea of Thieves um, on, on the, the uh, what's it called, the results stream. So... It's happening on uh, June 9th, which is this this coming Thursday. Uh, it's going to happen on at 10 a.m. Pacific time. Uh, what is that? 10, 11, 12, 12, 1, 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And that would be, gosh, what would that be? 6 p.m.? No, 5 p.m. Uh, UTC. Uh, it's going to be over on twitch.tv forward slash Sea of Thieves. And it's going to feature Joni and Mike Chapman who have been kind of like the two people who really have been uh, on the opposing signs. Joni has been in favor of burning uh, Golden Sands, and Mike has been in favor of saving Golden Sands, which is uh, really surprising for me because most of the time i'm usually like one to to kind of support uh mike's idea of what's going to happen but because i don't know what's going to happen with uh the reapers winning i want to see what that turns into because if you've been out there and you've actually been doing this depending on when you actually uh visit golden sands and where we're at with the tug of war uh golden sands has been appearing slightly different and i've actually been really impressed by this <laughs> So if you were going to be heading over to uh, Golden Sands blog or Golden Sands Outpost and the Reapers are winning, what you might be seeing are a bunch of uh, kind of lethargic spirits kind of hovering or hanging around uh, Sea of Thieves um, or, or around the island. They're just kind of there. They're not really doing anything and you can't interact with them, but they're definitely just kind of there, which kind of helps suggest that the relic caches are being empowered and that whatever's going on with Golden Sands Outpost is breaking the veil down between uh, the Sea of the Damned and the Sea of Thieves in that area. And the result of that might end up being 
that Golden Sands outpost turns into the next Fort of Fort or no Fort of the Damned, where Old Boot Fort was originally uh, a standard fort uh, due to the dark relics with uh, Wanda and uh, the Grey Morrow's tampering. They turned Old Boot Fort into a Fort of the Damned. And I actually really loved Fort of the Damned, uh, uh, their look. I loved all the hippocampuses uh, around the kind of general aesthetic. I'm not a big fan of Fort of the Damned just because I don't seem to ever have uh, a time where I go there to do it. And there isn't someone just trying to tuck as opposed to just straight on fighting. So I hate I hate trying to dig out the the, the ticks uh, to try and get rid of them so that I can actually enjoy the, the loot uh, or just straight it fight someone face to face i i prefer that far more than anything else um so when i think about like what's going on with the the uh spirits that are showing up over at Re- or golden sands outpost i'm really excited because i would love to see what a f- a a outpost of the damned would look like uh sailor's grave was kind of the first example of what a tavern or a, a world would look like with a pirate's life when we actually saw uh, the Sea of the Damned version of like a big tavern, not just like a, a tavern that would that would have like a, a couple bar stools um, and a couple tables and then a long table and a fireplace. This was like a straight up galleon that was like had a full bar. It had uh, chandeliers. It had a bunch of tables. People much much uh, uh, of it was kind of just jubilant with lots of spirits. And if it's one thing I've noticed with Sea Thieves is that you can have a lot of NPCs kind of hanging out uh, who are all spirits. Um, they don't seem to have a problem putting in tons and tons of ghostly stuff. As we've seen with the Phantoms, as we've seen with the ghost ships, you can have a lot of that uh, be very, very plain and very uh, low cost, I would assume. Uh, I don't know the real technical stuff behind it, but it feels like you can have a lot more spirits than you can um, like normal NPCs. So I would love to see what that kind of looks like. I would love to kind of see what, what a, uh, a, a golden sands, but a, a, an outpost of the damned would look like. Um, part of me would be very concerned about the Easter eggs as I've talked about in the past. I, I don't want people to lose their Easter eggs. I would feel really bad if I lost mine. And as a result, I would be very concerned that anyone that had an Easter egg on golden sands outpost is still, uh, honored with that Easter egg. I don't think that would change. I think something else would happen. But the alternative here is that we save Golden Sands. And the trouble with that is it kind of just sounds like it would go back to normal, which would be fine if it was uh, an outpost and people uh, want to be able to go back there to turn in their loot and have it be a place to spawn. Um, but genuinely, I, I don't know, man. It's, it's one of those things where having one less outpost has made things more interesting when I go out sailing. So I want to find out if it's going to be one way or the other. And thankfully, we are going to find out on the 9th of June. That is when the adventure ends. Uh, The next adventure currently says that it is due out in four weeks. And I believe it says that it is the Forsaken Hunter, which if we're looking at Lost Sands uh, currently as the um, event that's going on right now, then we can kind of say like, okay, well, this is this is a battle between uh, the the fate of of Golden Sands Outpost, whether it's going to be lost or not. Um, and the Shrouded Deep before that dealt with the Shrouded Ghost and uh, the, the Hungering Deep event with Merrick. Um, the one before that was the Forts of Forgotten, which was more unique and actually just had uh, memories of forts that were brought in from the Sea of the Damned by Flameheart. And then, of course, Shrouded Islands was the first adventure that was just kind of like islands that are shrouded. So with the Forsaken Hunter... That kind of uh, leads a little credence to Merrick continuing his efforts to be a part of the story right now. Uh, If it deals with the Forsaken, then I think what that entails is the uh, Soul Flame Captains. I think those are going to be playing a little more part in what's going on. Or we're going to be dealing with kind of the Forsaken uh, uh, pirates that are either part of the Sea Sea Dogs, uh, the Wanda's crew that we might find out a little bit more about her and what's going on with them 
or we might actually actually and i would not be surprised too if the forsaken hunter actually ended up becoming uh either either merrick or uh wanda depending on on what's going on but um lots of different ways we could kind of take this with uh the forsaken hunter the interesting thing that that comes up is that the Forsaken Hunter actually has uh, a bit of key artwork that's showing as a result, and it shows the journals from the uh, Tall Tale or the the Fate of the Morning Star, uh, which I believe is is uh, Gray Morrow's books, um, alongside some some interesting artwork that kind of lends itself to the idea that we are going to be dealing with Gray Morrow which would not surprise me, especially given that Grey Morrow is probably not too huge a fan of Flameheart. And if that's the case, then this might become a situation where Merrick is reaching out to try and uh, get, get Grey Morrow's attention onto Flameheart and have something akin to the enemy of my enemy is my friend. Without knowing a whole lot about what's going on, we are going to have to wait four weeks before we find out what this adventure is going to lie into. And with the uh, season being extended another eight or another three weeks uh, for a total of eight weeks, that means that we're going to have a lot of downtime which might lead us into more information about what's actually happening with the uh, current ARG, the mystery of who killed DeMarco. So let's talk about some merchandise. Um, I wanted to dive into this just a little bit because I figured people are fans of this stuff, but I'm, I'm kind of curious how people feel about this. So if you don't know, and this is the first time you're hearing about it, there have been some new t-shirts that have been released. One of them is uh, Save Golden Sands. The other one is Ruin Golden Sands. And they're kind of showing off a couple paired t-shirts where you can kind of represent uh, your decision to either save or ruin Golden Sands. Um, I honestly, I feel like these could have been a little more interesting. I'm not going to pick these up because they seem super out of context unless you're uh, with a bunch of people all the time uh, to where they understand the context of this, especially given that this is a two week event uh, for Sea of Thieves. You have to know what's going on in Sea of Thieves and you have to be understanding the the, the whole context of uh, saving versus ruining Golden Sand. So I like that they do this. Honestly, I kind of wish that we had artwork that showcased more of like the characters or even just like the actual island itself. Uh, some of the silhouettes and stuff that we have with the, uh, for example, the rare sailor bounties uh, hoodie that has like a really beautiful kind of colored silhouette. It looks like a postage stamp um, and it has sailor's bounty like it's a like a kind of um, um, oh, what do they call them? the postcards that you send to people from different locations it's more stylized i love that kind of stuff more than anything but uh the the shirts that we've been getting so far have not been the best quality in my opinion i've got a few of them that i wear from time to time that are more recent and i kind of preferred the the original uh vendor even though i wasn't a huge fan of that vendor um, i prefer the quality that they had of those so We've got these two. They're available on the rare store if you're if you're looking for those. Uh, and then we got another three. And uh, the three that we got deal with Demarco. Um, the first one says, "Who killed Demarco?" with a big question mark, all in red. Uh, and then another one says, "I killed Demarco," uh, all in red. And then it has another one that actually I think is actually more entertaining. I actually like this one uh, a lot better. But it has kind of a, a stylized silhouette of Demarco with a hat falling, and it looks like he's tripping over something which really does kind of just make a joke out of the fact that he's gone uh which i actually think is is kind of funny like demarco died by you know it was an, it was an accident it wasn't a suicide it wasn't uh it wasn't a, a murder um it was purely just something that happened to happen but overall i would say that these are cool that we're getting further content uh through merchandise and through the game that kind of pairs up with each other um for too long we ended up having a very stagnant store there wasn't ever really anything interesting coming to it except for once in a while we started to get stuff uh i really love the mouse pads i i really think that i need to upgrade mine i've got one that's a, a diablo one how long have I had this thing? I think I've had this thing since uh, back when Heroes of the Storm was doing esports, which 
is a painful memory to think about losing that but um yeah i I've, I've been kind of wanting to get a uh i don't know i really love diablo so but i don't know i've been playing diablo immortal too which uh has some uh, yeah i'm not going to get into it here uh if you want to hear thoughts about that i've, I've got the xbox wrap-up podcast you can probably listen to that and hear hear my feelings on what's going on there Um, Let's talk about the Trivia Tuesday thing that happened with Sea of Thieves. Uh, They always do the Trivia Tuesday thing, um, and Sea of Thieves always puts out some interesting news, but this week I thought was kind of an interesting one. So uh, we got this on, uh, actually, no, was this, this was last week's. Um, Though Captain Flameheart's floating visage no longer taunts the Sea of Thieves, his influence can still be felt most recently through the actions of the Servant of the Flame, who is now actively encouraging Reapers to fight in his father's name. Um, It's something that really is kind of just sticking it out there as like a, hey, by the way, in case you didn't know, uh, Sea of Thieves is, is really just flat out saying that the... Uh, Reapers or the Servant of Flame is Captain Flameheart Jr. And we happen to find out a little bit more about this uh, thanks to the most recent um, uh, 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 journals. You know, we've we've kind of they've been saying this for a while, kind of getting people like prepped for the idea. Like the one before this was uh, believing him to be dead. The Servant of Flame once took the name Flameheart for himself and traveled to the Sea of Thieves. Upon learning the truth, he assumed a new identity and began to plan for the day of his father inevitable return i again i still really feel like i wish that the servant of flame was uh just a regular person but they're choosing to make him the uh the the flame heart junior and when i come to terms with that i will probably really enjoy it but for the time being i feel like i kind of wish that there was something deeper going on um that i don't I don't actually get at this point, but that aside, uh, we have very strong confirmation from many different sources that Flameheart Jr. from the Tale of Sea of Thieves book uh, is in Sea of Thieves and has been for a while, as Mike Chapman had mentioned in the past, um, that he was in the Sea of Thieves if we didn't know exactly who he was, uh, which always led to the speculation that it is, in fact, the Reaper uh, or the servant of flame. So as we kind of move forward with uh, what's going on with the, the story between the Sea of Thieves and uh, the, the Reaper's Bones and, and as far as like the actual um, fight that's going on between them, I figured now would be a good time to kind of dive into the journals that we got with Adventure 4. And I don't I don't know if everyone's gotten a chance to actually read these, uh, but I wanted to go through these because I think it's important to kind of tie what's going on with the adventure. Sure, we're trying to decide if we're going to be saving uh, Golden Sands or if we're going to be ruining it. But there's a lot of information that's going on that we want to try and talk about, like why we're doing this. What's the point? What is going to happen as a result? So I wanted to dive into the servant of flame journals first and kind of talk about those in the context that actually has those uh the first one is called masked and it says my mission has brought me to a familiar shore uh once the lair of those whose betrayal still casts a dark shadow over all that we accomplished together here he's referencing uh, the the warsmith, Wanda the warsmith, um, who has the the Wanda's hideout on Wander's refuge, um, where you first kind of meet uh, up with the servant of flame to kind of kick off that side of the adventure. I cannot comprehend her disloyalty. Not I, whose dov- devotion to father was so pure it cut through the thrall of my captain and set me free once more. So if you're not too familiar, um, I I don't expect everyone to be familiar with this. I'm familiar with this because uh, Thrall is the name of of the former leader of the Horde for World of Warcraft. So uh, Thrall itself is is the word they use uh, for slave. Uh, When you're enthralled by something, you are uh, enslaved by it. Um, So if you've ever watched anything or if you've ever seen anything that's been enthralling, it's because you can't, you can't, you've given up your free will to this thing essentially uh because you're so enticed or you're so enthralled by it if that makes sense so uh the fact that uh he says that his whose devotion to father was so pure it cut through the thrall of my captain 
which we know to be the uh, person who kind of met up with uh, Flameheart Jr. in the Tales of Sea of Thieves book. Uh, the Tales of Sea of Thieves book kind of kind of shows off the the time when uh, the, the Flameheart Jr. and his crew were were uh, stranded on an island. They found a cave. They went down into the cave and found out that there is a um, a, a chalice. Uh, and they, they weren't sure what was going on with the chalice, but they ended up drinking from the chalice and it seemed like everything was fine, uh, until they noticed that they didn't seem to really mind being thirsty or hungry. It didn't seem to really matter to them. And that's when they all kind of realized the reason why that's the case has to do with the fact that they all turned to, uh, skeletons. And because of that, um, they are kind of like, they're kind of, under control of the captain like the captain was the one that kind of uh met up with them and and kind of uh told them what was going on gave them uh an understanding and a, and a leader in this aspect all of that is kind of hearsay though uh because it's not explicitly said in the game um so because of that it's it's hard to really know for sure if that's what's happening but with uh with him saying that his devotion to his father was so pure, it makes me kind of have to assume that he went to the Sea of Thieves to be with his father, to to follow his father's footsteps. Hence him taking Flameheart uh, as, his, as his name and going with Junior. Um, it's kind of what I would have to expect. Uh, the captain, by the way, is the captain. I've got a video on YouTube that kind of explains how I believe the captain to be Captain Hook from uh, Peter Pan that uh, was an actual pirate. And we'll actually have to, to see what's going on with the story in Sea of Thieves to see if that actually becomes true or not because of you know, pirate's life and the, the little, um, the object and what was in the object pot potentially being Tinkerbell. All that stuff's in there. Uh, but there's some very clear indications about what might be going on uh, with the captain eventually coming to see thieves once Flameheart's story is actually done and i think there's a reason for that uh but i can't really i can't really say for sure what i'm what i'm talking about until we kind of see a little bit more about what's going on with Flameheart and that whole story so the next little bit of the journal says from the day she gave me my mask which is the mask he wears right now uh, we worked diligently to create a sanctuary for those who still value true piracy she toiled above as i did below and what he's talking about here is uh what i can presume to be the um the, the two parts of this one wanda was always the front facing figure at the reaper's hideout back before it was just the unmarked island uh and she was the one that always kind of took everything for the reapers the reaper chests the gifts the the bounties all of that stuff was all stuff that she took so she was working diligently above ground I also think that the, that also kind of ties into the fact that he's been underground uh, for so long. So uh, he's been under that kind of wood door that's at Reaper's hideout, the one that's in the middle that has the chains that we hear lifting up during the orb stream. He's been working down below um, to kind of make sure that things are are being uh, taken care of down there where where they're from what i can assume what i'm what i'm hoping is that uh they are working on building up the reaper's hideout to be something akin to the pirate legend tavern i don't know if that's necessarily the case it's just kind of my hopes for it but that's kind of what i'm assuming based on this uh and then it goes on to say in the journal even when we parted i felt no sorrow for I knew that the culmination of our work was nearing, that soon father would return to claim his throne. So this is kind of like how uh, Wanda has been working to get Flameheart to be back at the Sea of Thieves because she was in love with him until she uh, was inevitably uh, let down by his lack of love for her. Uh, her sister, he goes on to say in the journal, uh, speaking to Wanda with an O, uh, at least had the courage of her conviction. Let the warsmith stand against us with her broken heart and have it be and have it taste my blade. So he's talking about, which is ironic because, uh, you know, she's a skeleton. I can't imagine she actually has a heart physically, uh, but talking about stabbing her in the heart uh, after her, her, her portrayal uh, or the portrayal of her um, ab abandoning, uh, betraying Flameheart and Flameheart Jr. Uh, because of love uh, kind of moving into that. So I really, I really love 
the fact that this really does kind of set the stage for what's going on and why Wanda is no longer in charge of the Reaper's hideout, why she's no longer there, and why eventually we will probably see her going against Flameheart in the future and how that might become something that is important for the future of the game as we kind of move forward. Uh, let me take a quick break, actually. Ahoy there, Pirates. This is the ad for this episode, and I did want to let you know if you wanted to avoid these and just get a regular filler, you can head over to the Patreon. There's a special feed just for patrons that get the ad-free version. If you want to keep listening, though, I can't say I blame you because this week I want to let you know about Loot Crate and getting 15% off of most crates and crate subscriptions when you use the link and code Robots Radio in the show notes. Also, you can head over to audiobooks.com, get your first three audiobooks for free, and that can include any two vip books or use the affiliate link for green man gaming if you're a pc gamer you'd like to save money on games it's one of the benefit of being a pc gamer head over to green man gaming you can get codes for steam epic any of the different stores that they have deals going on they have deals going on all the time and if you plan on buying there please consider using our affiliate link all of that goes straight to me through the network thank you all so much for everything that you do to support this podcast it means the world to me and i continue to try and improve the quality and the content for you with that pirates let's get back to the show getting into the next journal this one's called cloaked even the strong must have their secrets no matter how brightly the flame of ambition burns within you Dis- uh, discretion di- no discretion sorry <laughs> discretion can still have its place in your plans the wisdom is a lesson learned from my father who taught me what a thousand scholars could not since our reunion he will see that i have listened so this is kind of in reference to a tales uh, of the sea of thieves book uh, where flameheart jr was originally a scholar turned pirate after his father had left to go back to the sea of thieves he was an orphan uh, who was adopted by flameheart at some point in his real life uh, and sent to a school to be scholared uh, to learn all of the ways of, uh, of of kind of the intellectuals and having seen the 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 fun and joy and and, and uh, uh, esteem that comes with becoming a pirate Flameheart Jr. decided to take up his father's name, leave his, uh, his, his old name behind, and become a pirate and sail to the Sea of Thieves. So he talks here about how he's actually been reunited with his father. His father has been teaching him a bunch of stuff, bearing in mind that the father, uh, Flameheart Jr., was actually a former uh, crew member of the captain, um, who the captain, I believe, if I'm remembering the lore correctly from, uh, what was it, the, oh gosh, what was it? Was it Heart of Fire? No, it wasn't Heart of Fire. Seabound Soul, uh, where we're, I think we that was where we found out that uh, the captain had actually mutinied against Flameheart. If I'm rec- I, I could be wrong on the verbiage on that, and I don't have uh, all, all the time in the world to be able to dive into that, but I'm pretty sure that's where it came from. But regardless, Flameheart Senior used to work for uh, or work with Captain, and because of their parting, uh, there's a lot of animosity between them. Uh, so basically, it goes on to talk about how uh, he's he's happy that the father that his father has been able to teach him how to basically be a real Really good pirate at this point hence reapers uh that fool merrick discovered our relic caches these are the relic caches that we've been turning into reapers or uh stealing and turning uh or turning into merrick if we find them over at golden sands uh, but others shall be buried in their place the island known as golden sands shall be golden no more so and this is it really does kind of speak to the idea that I really think that we should have been burying relic caches on Golden Sands and people could be stopping us. They could be stopping us from being able to bury them uh, and setting off a keg to actually start an event that would become like a horde mode for that that island uh, where both NPCs and players would have to fight up against like uh, uh, reapers um, who are like the phantom reapers or just regular reapers. Uh, The journal goes on, when the energies stored within our rowboats are released, the relics shall shroud the island once again, driving away all who seek to trade there. Thus, we shall drive the companies back beyond the devil's shroud, keeping the waves free for, for those who deserve them, pirates for all eternity. 
And this is one of those situations where I genuinely, genuinely feel like what is happening here is the matter of perspective. And it, it really kind of comes down to Flameheart feels like the seas should be free to all. And that trade companies, even the small trade companies that we have in Sea of Thieves, are still uh, objects of organization that need to be squashed out because they represent order when there should be more chaos. And if I'm being 100% honest, what I think is happening here is we're going to see either the the welcoming of Flameheart back to the Sea of Thieves where we have to deal with the Burning Blade and the Silver Blade and things like that, or... If Golden Sands is renewed, then what will happen is we will then pave the way for uh, the Grand Maritime Union to invade. And I have no proof of this. I just have a feeling that if we save Golden Sands, what will happen is, is that the thing that is, is being pushed up against so strongly with the Reaper's Bones companies order those are going to be the things that are threatening the sea of thieves and the freedom for all pirates pirates for all eternity and as such even though we are completely fine with the trade companies that we have right now we may not be completely fine with all of the trade companies that eventually come to sea of thieves and one of those companies one of the most dangerous companies of all represents a large faction of trading companies with a large battalion of ships that have yet to actually make it into the sea of thieves through sheer arrogance and that is the grand maritime union also known as the east india trade company by our historical standards but in sea of thieves they would be the equivalent uh, of the east india trade company this grand maritime union and they may not represent things that we want as as evidenced in the the actual comics uh for the sea of thieves uh, uh kind of chronicles with the merchants um where uh merchant trader molly was or chief merchant tra trader uh molly was formerly actually a uh grand maritime uh employee and wanted to have uh, a say of her own eventually left them uh, and created her own trading company after figuring out how to make it to the Sea of Thieves and then meeting up with the Order of Souls uh, and finding a way to barter with them. So it's one of these things where you, it, it, it's like a cursed monkey paw, um, if you're familiar with the reference, where you make a wish, but the wish is, is tainted. It's not, it's not the pure wish that you expect. It's, it's got a, a, a bit of a dark twist to it. And you wish that you want Golden Sands to be saved. And that's great because it, it renews uh, say it renews Golden Sands Outpost and all the traders make it back. And ah, wouldn't you know it, a couple other traders happen to find their way and to set up shop on Golden Sands Outpost. And those traders are now the Grand Maritime Union, who are now taking a larger cut of your gold, who are now charging you more, who are now trying to sink your ships because you are a pirate. And they don't want pirates, they want order. And now you have to deal with that. So that's kind of where I'm feeling like could be the case if we go that route, which is where we kind of have to look at the other side of the story, which is going with the Reapers. The Reapers are a known quantity. They want to destroy the trade companies. That's fine. We understand how they operate. And if that's the case, then that's the case. At least we still have a place to turn things into at the Reapers hideout. Also. Flameheart is a known quantity. We know what he wants. We know what he's driving for. And that's something that we've been able to deal with so far. What we don't know is what's going to happen if we let the Reapers fail. So that's kind of where I'm, I'm, I'm kind of sitting on there. But uh, this was another great journal that kind of helped illuminate a little bit of my feelings about what could potentially be coming down the line for Sea of Thieves. Let's get into the third one, and I'll probably see if I can do the fourth one, and then we may have to hold off and do Merrick's journals next week just due to time. Uh, I feel like I've been kind of going a little bit long on here, but I had some feelings about some of the other stuff I wanted to get into. So let's get into the third one called Veiled. The Veil of the Ancients, a romantic name that belies the true potential such an artifact possesses, the power to move freely between worlds. The interloper, Bell, has done much to frustrate Father's plans. Unlike the complacent pirate lord, she needed no prompting to interfere. 
Now the veil has been denied us. Or no, yeah, now the veil has been denied us. It's stones tumbling from our grasp and into the lap of those who lack the courage enough to make use of its power. And this is kind of where I'm, I'm a little curious what's going on because uh, the veil of the ancients allows us to travel between the Sea of the Damned and the Sea of Thieves. Uh, it doesn't really explain what the point of that would be, except that it would control who's able to come to and from death. Right now, the ferryman is the one that kind of uh, decides if we're allowed to go back to the Sea of Thieves. Uh, there's the Sea of the Damned, where eventually people will show up if, uh, they, if the ferryman decides that their time is up and that they're no longer allowed back into the Sea of Thieves. Uh, some powerful characters like Bell, like uh, uh, Pendragon, um, have been able to move between the worlds, and we don't understand really why or how. might have a lot more to do with the fact that they know who the ferryman is and have worked with them to be able to allow their passage as a spirit between the realms. Um, and because of that, it's, it's tough to really understand the relationship because it feels like you have to be on the list. List. If you're on the list, then the bouncer lets you pass through the doors. If you're not on the list, then you don't get to go uh, into the nightclub that is the quote unquote Sea of Thieves. And as a result of this, I think what is going on is, is that the Reapers are looking for a way to free people from having to be subject to the arbitrary decision of uh, what the ferryman makes. Do you get to go back to Sea of Thieves? Do you not get to go back to Sea, sea, sea of Thieves? Uh, who goes, who stays is all up to the ferryman at this point. And if you're on his bad side, if he has a bad side, then you don't get to come back. And having all that power is a big responsibility. And I think that's why the Reapers are trying to take the Veil of Ancients and actually remove that power from the person who has it. If they have the Veil, then they can say who comes and who goes, whoever they want. But you're just passing the power. You're not really like giving uh, freedom back to pirates to be able to decide. Or are you? If the Veil is removed and uh, people can travel to the Sea of the Damned and to the Sea of Thieves freely, and you don't need the power of a sea goddess or, or a castaway to be able to let you pass through a portal, and you can do so without the help of the ferryman and his uh, uh, ferryman ship to be able to let you come back to Sea of Thieves, and you can just decide whether you come back or not, that makes me wonder, what's the possibility there? What's the goal? Because that's essentially the freedom that Jack Sparrow was looking for. Freedom of death. Freedom to be a pirate forever. Freedom for all eternity. Pirates for all eternity. Moving into the rest of this, uh, let's talk about my journey has cost me dearly, including my cherished silver blade. Lost first to the shroud, then witless pirates, then to the sea queen herself. No more. I shall not suffer another defeat. I shall not disappoint my father again. I love this because to me, it says that uh, the servant of flame or Flameheart Jr. is going to be sailing on the silver blade once more. And that makes me feel vindicated in how I felt when we went through uh, a Pirate's Life Tall Tale 2. When I found out that the Silver Blade had actually been sailed, but not by Flameheart Jr. himself. And that always kind of rubbed me the wrong way. I was like, how could you let such an iconic ship from the Sea Thieves lore be left to a bunch of randos who just happened to spawn into the world and got to sail around on the Silver Blade and then they just lost it to Sirens? Like, come on. Like, of all the things, it's like... It's kind of like taking someone's, uh, I'm trying to think of it. It's like if you gave, uh, I don't know, Anakin Skywalker's lightsaber to some kid and told him that it was really, really important and he lost it, you know, like he just, it's like, really, that's the thing you're going to really, um, maybe that's a bad reference. Maybe that's a, a perfect reference. I don't know. Uh, but let's, let's get this last journal out of the way since, uh, since we've been kind of going along here and I want to try and wrap this up here. This last one is called Sealed, and I, I kind of like, I kind of like all of them, but uh, this one I kind of like a lot. Uh, it says, it has been too long since I thought to write a journal. I had forgotten that it came often, or it can offer free, or no, sorry, let me start this over again. It has been a long time since I thought to write a journal. I had forgotten that it can offer fresh clarity, even when one's destiny is known to them. 
And he's and he's specifically talking here about the book, uh, a tale of the uh, the the tales of Sea of Thieves, uh, book, which was written by Chris Alcock in conjunction with uh, Pete Hines and Adam Park and Mike Chapman, uh, back when the game was originally coming out. That was his journal. It kind of explained what Sea of Thieves was to a lot of us and gave us a lot of background for a lot of the story that we're going through right now. The book or the the entry goes on to say, before I understood that purpose, I would dutifully note down the events of each day in my log, the scrawlings of a child, of course, but soothing. And he's talking about his kind of childlike uh, uh, in, in knowledge of what was happening as a pirate. He wasn't a pirate. He was just kind of playing pirate as children do. Uh, and as he's kind of moved away from that, uh, he's realized that what he's been doing now is the work of an adult with purpose instead of scampering about trying to play pirate. Uh, the entry goes on to say words can be dangerous. The warsmith told me. If our true intentions were discovered too soon, the Reaper's hideout might never be completed. And again, I, I genuinely do believe that this is tying to the fact that there is uh, going to be a cave system, uh, a pirate legend uh, tavern of sorts for the Reaper's hideout. It's something that has been heavily alluded to, uh, heavily theorized about from many community members. Uh, and we've all been kind of waiting to see if that's something that's actually going to happen. The journal entry goes on to say that now that our secrets have been laid bare, my word can be a rallying cry to all those who wish to see the seas unchained for, and for the door to be opened. Until then, our work must continue. May the flame burn. In the reference there, I think the seas unchained for the door to be opened, I think speaks specifically to the ferryman. Uh, the ferryman has chains. Uh, that are broken right now, but he's, he's, he cannot leave the helm. He's chained to the helm for the door to be opened, I think is in two parts. One, it speaks to the ferryman's door. That door is only open if the ferryman allows you to be uh, able to go back to the Sea of Thieves. If that door is opened, then everyone is free to go to and from the Sea of Thieves, uh, from the Sea of the Damned, including his father. I also believe this to be uh, the door that is at Reaper's Hideout, that, that door that has yet to be opened for all of those who want to be a pirate for all eternity. Uh, and I think this kind of ties into the, the, uh, the orb stream that came out um, back in December of last year where they talked about uh, one of the lines from there was kind of a, a prophetic line uh, that said they will drink, they will die, they will rise again, and they will serve the flame. Uh, and I think that what that's talking about is the fact that they are still alluding to the fact that they want to offer uh, Reapers or fans of the Reapers to become a uh, pirate legend in a way that it, it represents the Reapers bones, um, maybe physically as well, like getting a curse that actually makes your skeleton in kind of like a bone-like creature, kind of like what bon what Bonda, what Wanda was like when she first got uh, killed or, or, or uh, kind of attached to the curse that she was playing around with when she was trying to make the curse cannonballs back in curse sales in the first year. Uh, I think that's where this is leading. They're trying to build members. They're trying to entice them with freedom. And they're trying to do so with the promise of a future that would give them the ability to be a pirate for all eternity. So... I I really love these. I think it's it's great to kind of see what's going on with this. Um, the Merrick's journals. I think I'll dive into next week if if nothing big happens, because uh, it talks a lot about kind of Merrick's reconciliation with what's going on with Sea of Thieves and how he's felt a lot better about what he wants to do and become more of an important role. But we'll we'll kind of get into that next week as we dive into him and all those feelings. Uh, but hopefully you all remember to get in there get your deeds done, make sure you, you get your servant's lantern, make sure you get your savior of the golden sands sales, make sure you get your victor of golden sands title, read the journals. If you want head out there, take a look at them, uh, and, and just kind of genuinely, um, experience the content while it's still active as we're waiting for that, that, uh, awesome, uh, stream that's going to happen where we're basically going to find out who's going to win this. Is it going to be reapers? Is it going to be, uh, uh Merrick or team Merrick and stuff? Um, how that's all going to play out because I, I genuinely am 
kind of curious how it goes. I'm, I'm a little over the stalemate. I kind of wish that it was a little more one way or the other, because then it would, uh, for me at least, kind of drive like whether or not we were going to be needing to work harder on stuff. With it staying in the middle, it feels like, mm, it doesn't really feel like I'm, I'm able to understand, like, am I really making an impact with all this or not? So uh, I, I would love to kind of find out at the end here how it's actually going to work out. All right, Pirates, that's going to do it for this episode of the Keel Hauled Podcast. Believe it or not, this is actually episode 226. Uh, we just passed 225, and uh, we're creeping up on 250 episodes, which is just insane. Uh, if you have time and you have effort and you haven't done so already, uh, there's plenty of ways you can actually support the podcast without becoming a uh, Patreon. Uh, one of the easiest things to do is actually support the social media sites that um, help kind of showcase where the content it's going to be either through Spotify. Uh, if you want, you can always do a five star rating over there. That helps out. I think right now we're at 128 uh, rating and, or ratings, and uh, also the YouTube. I put these up uh, with B roll from the streams that I do on Saturdays with everyone. Uh, so these go up on the YouTube channel as well too. There's uh, 435 subscribers over there, and it's been really kind of cool to uh, put a little more time, a little more effort into the the actual videos and stuff. And when they do a video uh, a trailer, I usually like to do a breakdown of what that is. And a lot of people seem to be really enjoying those. Um, also, head over to the iTunes. If you happen, uh, 164 ratings over on the Apple podcast uh, review sites and stuff for that as well, too, which is crazy that uh, Spotify in just a short amount of time has almost reached the same number of ratings uh, for the, the Apple podcast, which has been going on uh, way, way, way longer than the Spotify stuff. So, um, um, all free ways that you can go support the content that I make if you if you can it always helps with uh, the patreon just to help kind of make sure that I'm, I'm taking care of bills and doing stuff uh, for for the podcast and just kind of supporting me in general honestly uh but I appreciate nothing uh, or everything regardless um, and also if you want you can also send in your stories and your thoughts as well, too. Uh, the Patreons always get the last episode of the month, but if you don't want to be a Patreon, uh, I don't blame you, but um, or, no, not that I don't. That sounds weird, doesn't it? Uh, but I, I understand, I guess would be a good way to go. Uh, but if you still want to send in your thoughts and feelings, there's the Discord server. Uh, and then you can also send in an email, too. You can also send an email into C-A-P-T-L-O-G-U-N at gmail.com. That's Logan at gmail.com. I get the those, I read them. Uh, if it's something that's relevant to what's going on with Sea of Thieves, I like to showcase it on the actual episode. Feel free to send in feedback that way if that's a good way for you to go about it as well, too. Uh, and Pirates, with that, if you want to get a hold of me otherwise, head over to Twitter on C-A-P-T underscore L-O-G-U-N. Head over to the Discord server. The links are in the show notes. Uh, click on the Discord, Keelhaul Discord. It'll take you to uh, the, the site or the app. Uh, just log in, join in with the, the rest of the people. Uh, we still have the Sherpa program there too if you're looking to learn how to play sea of thieves or you're looking for other people to play with uh, the sherpa program is there to help kind of get people set up so for success so that you can go around and make money on sea of thieves uh, with a really nice good group of people that are working on that as well too so if you have any questions or concerns feel free to always reach out to me uh, i'm always available if i don't always reach you uh, right away it's either because um, I'm, I'm busy at the moment or i just haven't gotten around to it but just hit me up if, if i'm missing something because I don't, I don't mind that. Uh, and I think that's going to do it. So pirates, thank you. I love you and look forward to sailing with you on the Sea of Thieves. Love the Mass Effect series, and are you looking to learn even more about Mass Effect? The things that you didn't even know that you didn't know? Well, this is your host, 
Tom, or robots, and me and my co-host N7 Legend do a show called The Mass Effect Lorecast. It is available on whatever podcatcher you're listening to this right now. We also do it live on twitch.tv slash robots radio, 1030 Eastern, 730 Pacific on Sunday nights. So go look it up right now. The Mass Effect Lorecast. We'd love to have you join us. Hey, Simone. Yes, Chad. What would you say is your favorite bad movie? Oh, where would I start? But probably at Zombie Strippers. Oh yeah, which we've actually done on our podcast, Fresh Tomatoes, the movie podcast. This is a podcast where we take some of the worst movies ever created, and even some of those movies that you might have thought were brilliant, but still got a bad critic score, and we say nice things about them, because you know what? Someone put the effort in, so we're gonna be there, fighting in their corner. Absolutely, Chad. Even if the movie was total garbage, there are some makeup artists that gave it their all, and we're here to recognize that. Exactly. And with really fun themes every week, such as National Treasure Week, Weddings Week, uh, movies with Jeremy Irons and dragons in them, how could you go wrong by joining us every Tuesday and Thursday for some optimism in your life? And like we say at the end of every episode, we love you and there's nothing you can do about it. We love you and there's nothing you can do about it. Goodbye! Bye.